Hi, this is Kevin from the Matsaurus, and in this video we're looking at questions 6 to 10 of the Tamua, the test for, of mathematics for University Admissions from 2019, used by a range of UK universities for their maths degrees. I've got a playlist of the whole of this paper um, and some other questions that I'll link below, and also check out the stuff I've done uh, on math over at the uh, Matsaurus website, there's loads of useful stuff that you can use to prepare. Let me know in the comments if you've got any other ways of doing these questions or anything that you're not sure about. Um, otherwise, please do just like this video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me get the content out there and share it with anyone else you know that's taking this test. Otherwise, let me get on with these questions. So in question six, we've got these two circles with their equations given, and uh, it says they've got exactly a one point in common. Find the difference between the two possible values of r. So really, um, a quick sketch is very informative here. So the centre of this first circle is at minus four uh, minus 1 and it's got radius uh, it's got radius 8 so I'll just sort of roughly sketch this uh, and the other one has center 8 4 um, and so uh, and it's got radius R right so actually if this is a minus 4 with radius 8 I guess well 4 um, so x equals 8 is still gonna be way over here so it's gonna be like somewhere up here right now um, the question is, if it's got one point in common with this circle, well, okay, so so one, the, the most obvious option is that there's sort of it's a circle that sort of looks a bit like this, and it just touches here, right? Um, and now where's the second possible uh, option? It says we want to find the difference between the two possible values of R, so there must be two circles that work. Well, there's also, I suppose, a much larger circle that would come around here and would just like sort of touch on touch on the other side. Okay, my circles are terrible here, but you get the idea. Right, so actually if you think about it, the difference between the two possible radiuses, here's the first R, and the second R, uh, let's call it R1 and R2, would be here. So actually the, the, the difference is just the diameter of the other circle here, and we know that's got radius 8, because 8 squared is 64, so the difference is the diameter is 2 times 8, which is 16, and the answer is C. Okay, in question 7, um, we've got uh, a curve given with this equation, and it says the gradient of the curve at x equals minus 1 is a function of q. Find the value of q which minimizes the gradient when x equals minus 1. Well, nothing to do here apart from uh, multiply out and differentiate. We know the formula for the gradient is going to be given by dy by dx. Um, so uh, let's just multiply this out and get 4q squared x um, plus 6q minus 2qx cubed minus 3x squared, so dy by dx here uh, is going to be 4q squared, uh, this one goes to 0, and I get minus 6qx squared minus 6x, okay so dy by dx when x equals minus 1 is 4q squared minus 6q times minus 1 squared which is 1 uh, plus 6, and we want to minimize this, so okay, we could complete the square or something, but seeing as we're differentiating, why don't we just differentiate it with respect to q here and get uh, 8q minus 6. That's going to have a minimum when the gradient is 0. So 8q minus 6 equals 0, so 8q equals 6, and q equals 6 over 8, which is equal to 3 quarters, and the answer is f. Right, uh, so here we've got a function that is, takes values between 0 and 1 for x values between 0 and 1, and when the trapezium rule is used, uh, we get an underestimate, right? Now, you know, in this question, you don't have to think in too much generality here, right? If, you know, the answer here is going to be true in general, so you can just think about an example that fits the characteristics here, and if it's true in general, it has to work for your example, right? And, I think about it in more detail if, if something doesn't work. But so let's just sketch an example of a possible function here. So it's got to sit entirely in this square uh, 0, 1 by 0, 1. And the trapezium rule would give an underestimate. And so the simplest thing I can think of is a, is a curve that just looks like this. If I say used just two intervals here, I would definitely get an underestimate with the trapezium rule, right? So here's my example function. Now I just scan down this list. Well, okay, if I integrate f of x plus 1, well, that's just like that. That's still going to get an underestimate. So I'm looking for one that gives an overestimate, remember? 
Um, if I do 2 times f of x, that's still going to give an underestimate. Um, if I do the integral between 0 and 1 of f of x plus 1, sorry, and minus 1 and 0, well, okay, so f of x plus 1 is just going to be this shifted to the left, and it'll be between minus 1 and 0, so it's same area, basically, same trapezium rule uh, underestimate. Same 0 and 1 of f of minus x, well, 0 and minus 1, sorry, of f of minus x, well, I think that will just look up something like this, and so it's still going to be an underestimate, so it must be e. Um, and if you think about it, 1 minus f of x here, if I draw, drew, drew that one here, that's going to look more like this, uh, and indeed we would get an overestimate from the trapezium rule. So the answer is E. Okay, um, slightly tricky here. Find the area enclosed by the curves y equals p root x and x equals p root y. So, um, okay, so just roughly, okay, p times root x is going to look something like this. This is just going to be uh, right, um, and x equals p root y, so that's going to be root y is x over p, so y is x squared over p squared, so it's going to be like a x squared curve, and so the area we're going to be looking for is here, and okay, if you're worried at all about negatives and things and square roots, just, just be satisfied that we're working in the positive quadrant here um, to work out this area, uh, and we're going to just not worry about it, right? We don't have time in this test to think about anything unnecessary. So what we need to know is the intersection of these curves. So I've got y equals p root x and y equals x squared over p squared. So I've got p root x equals x squared over p squared. So that's p cubed equals x to the 3 over 2. Um, so we see then that x is equal to p squared. Okay, so the area that we're looking for is the integral between the upper curve here p root x which I'll write as p times x to the one half minus the lower one which is going to be 1 over p squared times x squared and I want to integrate that between 0 and p squared dx okay so I'm going to get uh, 2 thirds p x to the 3 over 2 uh, minus uh, 1 over p squared uh, times 1 third x cubed between 0 and p squared. So plugging this in, I've got 2 thirds p times, now x p squared to the 3 over 2 is just p cubed, so this is p to the 4. And then 1 over p squared times 1 third times um, p squared cubed, so p squared cubed is p to the 6, divided by p squared is p to the 4, so minus 1 third p to the 4, and I just get an answer of 1 third p to the 4, which is d, p to the 4 over 3. Okay, uh, question 10, we've got this integral that involves a modulus. Now, hopefully, well, you, you will have thought about this before the red exam if you've tried this question. Um, if you haven't thought about how to integrate something with a modulus in it before, this would be pretty hard, but um, really it's not as hard as it seems. All we have to do is think about the values of where x is negative or where x is positive separately, right? And if it wasn't just x in the modulus, I would think of whatever's in the modulus, which values of x can make it negative and which values of x can make it positive, and then do the two integrals separately, okay? So this integral here, well, when x is negative, I'm gonna go between minus one and zero then, and when x is negative, the modulus of x is minus x, right? So it's minus x times one minus x dx. And when x is positive, so between zero and three, the modulus of x is just x. Okay, so I get something like this. And now I've just got to evaluate these two integrals. Uh, so integral between minus one and zero of x squared minus x dx, plus the integral between zero and three of x minus x squared dx. So I get x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2 between minus 1 and 0, and uh, x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3 between 0 and 3. So we'll just plug the numbers in here. Um, so I get 0 uh, when I plug in 0, and then minus, uh, minus 1 third minus 1 half. And then here I get uh, 9 over 2 minus 27 over 3. Um, so, uh, and then minus 0 for the 0. So let's just work this out. That's 
zero, and this is minus a third minus a half, so that's minus five sixths, but then it's minus, so I get plus five sixths. So I think let's just put everything over six here. I know I can simplify this, but uh, nine over two is 27 over six, and minus 27 over three, so minus 54 over six. So I've got 27 minus 54 is minus 27, plus five gives us minus 22 over six, which is minus 11 over three. And so the answer there is F. So I hope that was useful. Do let me know if you've got any other uh, ways of doing these better ways or not necessarily better ways, actually. It's always interesting to see different ways to answer these questions. Um, I'll put the rest of this paper into a playlist uh, very soon. So, um, and I'll link that below. So check out the rest of that. Please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already um, and share this with anyone you know taking the exam this year or in the future.